Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Renovating My Sylvanian Cottage. In the last one, if you haven't watched it already, we made miniature crochet blankets and in this one we're going to be making a blanket box or a treasure chest or steamer trunk but I don't have many supplies so we're going to be working from toilet paper rolls. <coughs> Here are my plans. So I thought a toilet paper roll or a cardboard tube would work great as the top side of the treasure trunk as it's all curved and we can make box from that as well. We just have to figure out some hinges and how that's going to work. I'm going to kind of wing this uh, project a little bit because I'm not entirely sure how to go about it so I'll just see what how it works and we'll go from there. Here's my reference. We are lucky enough to have this beautiful antique uh, chest which is the reference I'm going to be working from. It has lots of lovely hardware, these big wooden strips along the top and this leather strapping that goes around the whole piece. It has a little curve on the top so I'm going to measure this and work from these dimensions. So just a quick tip on scaling. If you want to scale down anything that you have that's full size into say a 1 12th dollhouse scale or anything smaller, you take the full measurements of the full size object and just divide each unit by 12. Then you should have the smaller uh, decimal point units and you can work from them. Uh, just screenshot that last screen if you want to make an accurate treasure chest, those would be the dimensions I would use. But for my house, because the scaling is very hit and miss with the Sylvanian cottage, um, I'm going to be just working from eye. So let's get going. So here is my kitchen roll tube. You can also use a toilet roll tube, it's the same thing, just I'm going to cut it in half to leave a little scrap piece for the top. I'm going to be working on the bottom half first, so we're going to be making the box, which means I'm going to have to flatten out this cardboard. So I already cut a little reference square that I'm going to be using that measures up to my bed frame and I'm going to trace that and then make four big um, squares off of that to create a box. You'll see in a minute. If you want to just measure out exactly the dimensions that you have and make a square and work from that. So I have just um, created four flaps essentially, make them a bit longer just in case uh, you need to adjust anything and I made these little kind of diagonal flaps off of the square so that this will um, all glue together, you'll see in a minute. So I just scored the lines and after scoring all those lines that makes it a lot more easier to fold. Adding these little extra flaps onto the box will create a much more secure seam when you're gluing them and actually makes it uh, somewhere to go for the glue and you'll create a much more secure box. So as you can see it's a little bit long here so I'm just going to trim those up and um, get it to the exact size that I need. I was kind of winging this the whole time, I wouldn't really have a a uh, plan plan for per se, but yeah. So I'm just gluing that together and all along the sides. Unfortunately my glue gun just broke um, right now. Oh! Oh no, that's not good. So that's a shame. Um, I guess I could use it as a traffic cone now. <laughs> so yeah. So after gluing all those together, I have a little box. Now this will be the base of my treasure chest. But we need to make the top lid. So this is going to require the nicely bent part. But before we do that, we are going to make this kind of frame that will go uh, on the outside of the box to ensure that it will actually close over it so you need to make it slightly bigger so I just cut a strip of cardboard and created this little mini frame so that will fit snugly over the top of the box so now we just need to make the top frame which will be from the curve so I just cut it the uh, tube in half and we're just going to measure up 
to what we need and just glue it all in place. We will also have some gaps around the side which I will fill in in a little bit. So I made little half semicircles, made them a little bit bigger and just glued them to the inside of the frame. And then when I glued down the curved part, um, I then just trimmed the excess off. This has seemed to be the most easiest way around it. Um, yeah, I think it looked okay. Um, I did have some ridges on the inside which made it a little bit difficult to close, so I lined it with some paper to help that slide on a little bit more easier. So now we have our top and bottom, we're going to start making the details. You can do all of these next steps with cardboard um, and just keep adding and adding, but because I'm a little bit extra, I'm going to try and do it to a more accurate material. So I have this scrap piece of leather that I'm going to make the leather strapping out of. So just cut little strips and we're just going to apply them on top. Um, I had to do this in a particular order because the trunk itself is built like that. The straps are on first, then the wood um, and so on. So we have to do it in a particular order. So there is all our bottom half of the leather straps and now we have to match up the top to match. As you can see I did do the hinges, I just made some little slits in the top half and kind of wrapped a piece of leather in and around um, the base. So it works, it's not the greatest hinge ever um, but it's what I could really do at this current time, I don't have any of the fancy miniature hardware that some people do use so if there is a better technique to this type of thing let me know as i'm going to be creating other pieces of furniture with doors on properly at some point so it would be handy to know if you can make something out of paper so the next stage once we had finished that is to make the wooden slats so i just used my trusty old popsicle sticks and coffee stirrers for this and cut them down to size and place them all across the treasure chest. And if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to subscribe and even click bell notifications if you are hardcore on YouTube. <laughs> Because guess what I found out? 95% of people who are watching my videos aren't even subscribed. So if you want to keep up to date on all the little weird things that I make, then please do that. I would be very grateful and you're supporting my channel. So thank you if you do that and let's get back on to the crafting. So I have just created a little strip here of leather just to go around the edges and we have pretty much done all of the big detailed stuff. So we're going to start making the side clamps, which are those kind of cast iron looking bolts that are on the side that hold the chest all together, I'm guessing. So I just made a simple little shape and cut out a bunch of these from the tube. So I just fold those in half and I'm going to glue them all across all the edges on the sides of the chest. But before I do that, I'm going to paint them all black. Uh, just so it's easier and I won't get any black on the leather strips when I go to glue them on. And I'm also just going to paint this one little black strip around the edge of the lid. So now we can actually get on to making this chest look real with the colours. So we're going to go in on the base of it with a just a ge general brown with black mixed in, so a deep brown and I'm going to fill in all these little squares and then we're going to go and shade it and make it look a little bit more weathered. So uh, I just added a kind of greyish brownie mix on top just to lighten a few areas 
and I also went in with black and shadowed up all the edges underneath all the strips of wood. This gives it a more antique look and also hides all of those little white edges and bits that you maybe don't want to see. Um, I also then went in with a more red warm toned brown for the wood uh, slats and uh, darkened up the edges and worn those in as well with black dry brushing. So I did all that with just acrylic paint, watered down, um, nothing fancy. And we're just going to apply all of the little edge pieces now onto the sides of the chest. This hides all those edges as well, which are a little bit rough looking, so neatens up the whole thing a lot. But we're still not done because I'm going to age, age it a little bit further. I mean, it's been knocked about quite a bit in the making of this, so it does look aged anyways. But we're going to give it a little bit more with a bit of sandpaper on the wood edges. Now I'm going to use my trusty safety eyes for these uh, bolted pieces on the side just to give it a little bit more realism. In hindsight I think I should have just used glue blobs on this and let them dry and painted them black as you can see here because I could have gotten a more accurate size there. They are a little bit big, bigger than I wanted but um, they look fine all the same. So here is it so far. Uh, I also added some paper inside just to neaten up the inside and we're gonna make some hardware now. So this is the same, just cardboard, kind of different shapes. I painted it black and added this gold Bic marker on top to give it a more kind of gilded, gilded look and we glued those on. I also glued a little tassel thing that's like a pool and um, put some black marker kind of stud impressions um, on there as well and added a keyhole detail. Then I stacked up some cardboard to make the latches and just kind of cut them into a diamond shape and painted them black. I did the same on the top so we kind of have this diamond shaped clasp. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with how those turned out actually. I also added some wire pieces there so it looks like you could actually close it up but you can't move those unfortunately. So we're all done, all those details, it took a lot of time actually, um, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out, uh, hopefully you're not sick of me talking about it all, but yeah this is how it turned out so let's see it uh, set up a little bit nicer lighting. So folks, what do you think of the finished treasure chest trunk? I really, really love it. Um, I'm sure Pirate Bob does too. Um, and yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out. And I hope this has inspired some of you to look upon some trash and see, well, what could I make out of this? Considering this was really only made out of toilet paper rolls and a few odds and ends. Um, it looks pretty realistic and uh, yeah, it now stores Bob's blanket, spare blanket, um, so he can keep his house all clutter free. So here it is finally in the place that I wanted it, which is just uh, by the bed. Um, it does still look a little bit big. I think by the time I had finished adding all the pieces, it ended up bit, being a bit taller. So maybe um, accommodate for that when you're making yours, but I did like it also in the corner of the bedroom, so it might stay there instead. Uh, so yeah, let me know which position you like best. Do you like it at the base of the bed or do you prefer it in the corner of the room? Let me know. Also, don't forget to comment below if you have any suggestions you'd like to see me make or something that you are looking for a tutorial on. I'm happy to have a go at that for you as well. If you're interested in the blanket featured in this video, um, you can get the free pattern and you can also shop in my Etsy store. I have lots of wallpapers that are just ready to download for decorating your own dolls houses. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.
Thank you.